I really wanted to play just straight Revenants. However, I also wanted to be competitive as I'm grinding back to pro rank and win games. And although Revenants got a bit of a buff, I don't think the archetype by itself with Drog would be strong enough right now to take me to pro rank easily. So I decided to do a bit of a hybrid. Now, if you haven't played the game in a while, you'll notice a couple things here. Revenant got a provision buff some point before sunset to four provision, and I really like that. But most recently, he also got a power buff from three to four, making it that much more difficult to remove. Along with that, Vincent also got a base power buff by one, which actually makes a pretty big difference, believe it or not. So these things are really good to see. I feel like these cards fit comfortably in with Siege, and I get a bit of that flavor that I'm looking for without going too hard with it. Now, what I like playing with them normally is Redanian Archer, so I felt like that could be something that we do. And the Archer helps create a crew pocket for Carabalistas, it helps create a crew pocket for Foltest Pride. They're really fun to spam when you play Queen Adalia. Same with the Siege Engines. So these things all naturally fell together. And with Rafford's Vengeance, a Siege being able to thin like crazy, bringing out a bunch of cards, we also get that crew ability where we get the two damage when we essentially jam something beside it that's a soldier or a mage so normally in siege when you're playing rafford's vengeance it doesn't feel great because you don't have a lot of mages or soldiers but in this event we have a couple more to help get the value off the rafford's vengeance so it's a very very heavy control deck and what a normal round one would look like is maybe trying to get down the archers with the dahlia and taking some thinning with the Siege Masters, and then just trying to cycle out the Kedwani Revenants. And we use the Inspired Zeal Leader ability because I have a lot of things that require Zeal in order to get good payoff. So for starters, Rafford's Vengeance. If we just float this card for one turn, there's a good chance that we're not going to be able to use it. So I go and I take a Leader Charge off that. The same thing applies with Selkirk. You want to be able to duel something right away because when a threat comes down, you answer that threat before it becomes an even bigger threat or the damage is done and it can't be reversed. So a couple situations like that. The third Leader Charge is usually optional. So it could be for Carabalista, it could be for a Revenant, and most of the time it's going to be for a Revenant because obviously we want to start this whole assembly line to get literally four points per turn of a, a body on the board and the damage that we're getting from it. It's an unbelievable combo. You have to think about it. It doesn't look like much. Revenant's base power goes up by one, but you multiply that by a whole melee row and that becomes a lot of points. So round one, you could take off a of bronze cards. If you're going second, you want to push it because the deck guide says win on even by any means necessary. So you go in with Rafford's Vengeance and if you want to, you could take it off King Henselt and you're able to play a crew card from deck, it pulls this out, you have this beside this, which has a cooldown. So then King Henselt's getting that cooldown boost. And if we're using a lot of the winches off of the Rafford's Vengeance, we're gonna be getting a lot of cooldown points for the Henselt. So Rafford's Vengeance on one side of Henselt, on the other side of Henselt, try to look for Kara Ballista or Reinforced Ballista, really just anything with a cooldown. Separate the rows so that you have Kedwani Revenant on the melee row if possible, so you can have more room to play everything and to go wide. And that's pretty much it. If you go into round one and you can bleed them out, win on even, go into round two, jam down Siege before they can play anything else, they're going to start putting down their engines, you're going to start finishing your scenario, and then it just gets really ugly for them, and you can go for a 2-0 push. If you do find yourself going into a short round three, you might be able to keep something like the Duel or the Heat Wave and Amphibious Assault for a big bronze swing, and usually that's enough to do it. We have a lot of cards that give us tremendous bleeding power. Bombardment with a full board full of siege engines. We have Vincent, the surprise play, literally comes in with the Haymaker. You know, they have like a 10, 20 point base power card on the board. You take it down immediately to one, flip that into a Ked Wenny Revenant. It's the most beautiful combination in the game. Seriously. So I had a lot of fun with this deck. There are many, many different directions that you can go with this, many considerations that you can do. Maybe one of these days, once I hit pro rank, I'll reconsider and do like a full Revenant deck, but we teared with this one. 
I went like 12 and 2 or something like that. It took me from rank 3 to where I am now. So, you know, it's doing something right. So, if you guys are having a difficult time climbing, you want something that's consistent, go ahead and give this one a try. It takes a little bit of what I like from Northern Realms and puts it all in one deck. So, there you guys have it. Now, I got four games with live commentary for reference today. So, if you enjoy that content, don't forget to drop a like. I have a lot of videos that I'm planning. And... Uh, I just bought a new laptop today and I told myself that I have to pay myself back for it. So, you know, if you see the ads rolling, just keep them watching and say you're supporting Q, you know? Appreciate you guys as always. I'll talk to you soon and uh, yeah, let's run the games. All right, first up here we got Monsters, Carapace. If it's Kelly, I'm dead on arrival. If it's Ogroids, there's a chance. We take a while to build up points, but they're able to just slam it, so we don't want to play a short round against them if it's overrides. Let's get rid of some of the sieges, right? So that we have some for later, at least. Okay, good. Just abuse it. I feel like we need to push so I can get her a lot of that big stuff in a bleed. If we can kill that before they put something else beside it or kill whatever they put beside it and then kill that, we can save the points. We don't want that death wish to go off. Ice Giant, okay, so. Now we gotta chip through that. You know, it's just a beautiful combo, being able to do this two turns in a row. Get down the second one, of course, good hits. Now we just work on that turn of seven to a three. And counting. Spear tip, that's annoying. It's kind of a weird flex, though, playing it from hand when they could thin it out. Because normally you're going to run that with a sleep, right? So you can get it out at 18 points. Okay. Yeah. I guess Cyclops is one way to do it. That feels pretty bad. It does set up his first round Osroll, though, which is interesting. So we go with the reduce there. I'm just beating this row. We got to get something going here. Clash comes down. They're so worried about us getting zeal when that's not the real threat. To be honest with you, it's the archers. When they're ignored, they're just terrible. Kind of a lame boiling oil, you know? They're only one big point slam away from winning, so we might as well just force it. Yeah. With the armor too. My dream of Killing off that other troll at one is sort of going away. Let's just kill that so the engine's gone. It won't even start. They have a second one. I don't want to play any of the golds, but I want to save the Peller for their carryover play. It's a very unfortunate one. I think we're stuck. Yeah, hence out for anything else is like very needed later. 
So 33 to 6. That looks like a very good pass if they play. Gross. Okay, but the thing is... Yeah, let's pass. The thing is... Oh. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen that combo. Gets it by one. Has an 18 point carryover. And then they probably lead off that. But they could also just pass and try to get two or three cards, you know? Because under normal circumstances, that would pretty much involve me proccing the whole scenario to catch up. They don't know who we have Vincent, though, right? So we can let them think they're in a good place and take Vincent if they're pushing. Okay, yeah, they have no idea. Sure, we keep a card. Bear in mind, they did go two cards down to get that playoff. That really probably makes them upset. If that was you, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Adalia. Pride. That would be good. If they try to stack. That's probably the best we're going to get. I like Adalia here. We do get the extra pull off of the... The one. And then we get the Henselt. So... They have a huge odds roll. They still have a lot of points in full leader. I like to get these carols down as soon as possible. Nice. Duel comes out. Now it's not like it's a shield wall type duel, but it still is good, you know? When we use the leader charge, boost it to seven, takes down a seven, can take down higher, we take a bit of damage, it's not that bad. He wave now or just just duel it. These dogs have no honor. Might as well keep our points. Might as well take the cooldown on the Carablista as well, because we get the hen cell boost, whereas with the RAM we won't. And we're just cooling it down to send it back. It's kind of an underwhelming card. I like the order on the Battering Ram, but that cooldown is pretty annoying if you're not playing Stockpile. We definitely want to jam something more consistent as well beside the Hen Salt on the right. Priorities getting rid of the might. Just preventing that from even being a thought of theirs. And then just pray that they forfeit before it's over. Because I think they still have about 40 points in two cards alone. Okay, goalie, it's good. If we can get 12, we can get out some card. I don't have crew. So we're going to have to wait for four cooldown. Ideally, Caraballista would have been on the right, and Full Test Pride would have been on the left. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get the goal yet. We could still push for it, but... Here, let's get that crew pocket up. Seventeen. Looks like a decent heat wave. Okay.
That's what I'm talking about, man. Ogroids. <sighs> Heatwave the goalie. Keep that on the range row, so at least I'm getting some value. Poor Trebuchet is just pounding at nothing the whole round. There we go. And spawns. <laughs> Whoops. Ah. Oh, it looks like they... How convenient. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Coming up here next, we have Northern Realms Shield Wall. Shield Wall. Not a lot of people are doing just the dual stuff. So... I don't know what it would be. Pretty much starts the same way every time. You can go one of two ways, really. Archer down and start accumulating those charges. Or you can go in with Raffords. I feel like if we're playing against the same faction, I like to save... Those big commitments like Raffords, the big tempo swings in the event that I need to bleed and figure out what we're actually playing against first. But now I know it's Siege and that's kind of scary, so. I mean, what's more satisfying than playing half your deck in one turn? You know, yeah, listen. We're going to take that damage just because I can kill that this turn. If they have control, I'm relying on some spaces on the range row to free up, you know? Okay. They probably had to think about that one. Is it Siege? Should I do it? I guess we just find something proactive here. You know, like I want to play it on a range so that we can get inspired, but I also don't want to fill the row. Because if I'm just sitting on charges, whatever they play now, we're going to kill anyways, and then just turn it into a knight, so. Unless they do that. I see what they're doing, and this whole thing is really annoying when you're trying to be aggro, you know, or just temple pass, because... They play a few control things. You can't get ahead because you're playing control. And then they just slam one big point sling. And they're right back in the round. So if I pass here, chances are they can do it in one card. Which is not really for me, you know? So yeah, they're going to go wide for the whole shield payoff thing. So I'm expecting when whenever you see this combo, it's Rogner. Whoops, I didn't play a card. Sure. Good enough. That could be a pass, maybe. If they play more than like nine points, we stay. It's about nine points, think about it. It's eight. And they put a shield, they pop a Rogner, they're ahead for free. They, then they can bleed with Immortals and Sork. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. And then pass. I don't like putting down a full test pride and leaving, but the fact that I have it on cooldown too might make them think I'm trying to stay in this. So. It's, damn. <laughs> Every time I'm just like one step forward, you nudge, you know, just one little last bit. 
You never get away with it. You never get away with it, but then if you don't do enough, you get punished for it. Hand is good. We have most of what we need. That's better. Yeah, yeah. Short round three, a dally, a couple engines actually makes sense. What I like about Bleeding and Besiege is that they can't get anything on the board, right? The first three turns they're playing are just worthless. No Unless they play that. AA for an errant. I guess they're going for the infusion ASAP. Right? They infuse it, then they're getting way more value. So we probably have to heat wave that because it'll get a plus four. And then we just try to keep this at bay. And then whenever they play the side, it's going to get damaged when we finalize the scenario. So. Knight Errant on the board with nothing beside it. It's nothing to worry about. Especially after the Grace popped off. Here. Just cuz. Can't duel a shield, but we can take that out. Windholm is going to be hard to keep going against us. This is a bad spot to be in. I want to... Ah, it's probably going to be the highest base power that we get this whole time, but they do get it off. If I would have kept some sort of charge or had just anything floating, we would find. Or if that was on range row. So I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. I think I was supposed to go and play the the siege engine first let's just say that was a mistake okay because if we would have proc there we would have got some cooldowns in place we might have got lucky on the pings not to say we would have got it but now we're just banging off a bunch of shields great i guess actually it's good that we saved it because now we can just do this and get rid of rogner value it's all hindsight you know what i mean I'm thinking that I don't play in all the way, so I'm going to use that leader and just try to get some lead, if any, you know? I never I'm 35, 23, they get it in one card, but then they have a short round three sad Rogner play. Actually, they're gaining quite a lot of points, too. They have the Henselt cooldown that they got, the two off the Windhelm, the one off the Errant. And that's just auto points. So whatever they play here gets ahead. Wait a second. Do they have to play that? Could they have not just passed? <laughs> what? I'd have to go back and see that. Alright, I think that's about as good as it's going to get.
surprised they still have this stuff left. I felt like we dealt with that the whole round one. Alright, there's one shield. You gotta look at these shields, like they're playing for a lot of points. Unfortunately, I'm giving them a shield. So, by me playing Adalia, it's actually... Phibius. And here comes. Okay. If you think about it, the Rogner could have been a lot worse. But they are up 21 to 6. And they still have a card. Okay. Easy. Now we gotta find like 15 points. We get more points. We float that so we can flip something. And then just play siege last turn either way there we go all right next up here we got skelliga blaze of glory We have blue coin. I don't like playing bombardment in round one, especially against warriors, because they don't really have anything we want to kill. In fact, it actually helps them. Off of damage. Plus, we have practically no siege engines till mid to late game, normally. That's got to be so annoying, because... Blaze of Glory, one of the problems that they have is they have a lot of direct damage, but they don't have a lot of pings. And so when you see something like a shield, when they're holding a gutting slash or stunning blow, it's a very <laughs> bad situation to be in. And epidemic of all things. And uh, it's not four provisions, buddy. <laughs> it's five. Whoops. That really helps. Tempest. Usually it's frost, but they decided to go with fog, and it's funny because the fog's actually what hurts us the most, and six turns of it on the range row, if they're playing no unit, it's going to be very annoying because we're going to lose all the armor on stuff, so let's get these out there now. And unfortunately, they're going to get chewed through, but I'd rather lose the one point than the armor off the uh, archers. We're banking 8 damage right now for the next turn. Uh. I think they should have done it the other way around and hit the 3 with the armor first. Oh, what am I saying? It had the shield. We can cannibalize a little bit, so if things start getting low, we can flip them. Okay, Maxi coming down, they're looking for a pass. Whenever someone plays Maxi, it's like, alright, I had enough of this. Finally get to use these. Jeez. And, uh... If I boost that one up, then the revenants start taking the hits. We actually save them both. It's nuts. 26 nothing. we We'd be in a good position to pass, but... This Mada kind of makes it, like... Interesting. To want to play. We get one more turn out of them. Maybe. And then pass. If I can get a pass off here, we're just, uh, we're winning 100%. Play the other revs so that they think we're going for it. Like, oh yeah, both revs. Oh. I 
All right, 30 nothing is kind of overkill, man. And bleeding into a matchup like this would be tough because they're going to have a lot of control and they're going to be very responsive. And it's going to be a lot of me floating engines waiting for value. So that's the problem. The king, the country, the freedom! Look at all this. Okay. I got a muzzle for an archer. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Just go into a long round three. It's going to pay off in the long run because they have to go first now. And if we can put them in a position where they're either discarding cards or getting lower trades on their cards that'd be better we'll actually get hits with our damage hits with our siege i'm feeling pretty good about it good hence out for full test pride and then or just we'll do it for raffords because pride could still be tutored and pride with no crew pockets not very good and we spent a lot of that stuff so this is what I'm talking about. Boiling oil off funeral boat. Get rid of it. Now they're like, man, that was my proactive play. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Floating a seagull. Unfortunately, I don't really have much to do to that. I don't really want to jam scenario. I want to see if I can float a couple engines to get the better bombardment value for later. Killing the seagull just means it's going to come back. A second epidemic at four, but it's a 5p. They need to go back to the deck builder and have a look at what's for. The heat wave that so fast it wasn't even there for a second. Like it was just like glitched. So Roach Knickers come out in round three as if they went this whole time without playing a gold card. At least we're getting what we want out of them here. I'm going to start putting on some pressure. We'll get Raffords going and uh, hopefully get some commitments. That leader is terrifying in a short round, especially with Sov. Or not Sov, but uh, I'm blanking. It's been so long since I played him. It's actually been so long. Now I'm just thinking about what his name is. Jeez, it's on the tip of my tongue. You know, brings back from grave. During a turn. Ah, anyways. Couple engines here. The satisfying part about all this, though, is that we actually get to play the entire deck. Okay. So, so comes out for a raging... Oh. Yeah, okay. And the card I was thinking about earlier was Iced. That reminds me of the first time when So first came out and I had Raging Bear going on. It wasn't this leader, but that So swing that brings back memories. If it was Patch Side of Fury, we would have been just chilling with that Vincent play, but I'm just gonna float that there and let him know what you play is gonna it's gonna hurt, you know. Who wants to taste 
I guess there's nothing to worry about because they would have taken out the Hjalmar. <laughs> nothing to target. This is great. Can be? You can't be serious right now. See, that strategy would have been fine if, you know, you had card. But we don't even have to use anything. Alright, and for the next game, we got Nilfgaard. Bunch of locks. Imprisonment's one of those leaders where you just have to say goodbye to any sort of engines in round one. You're just hoping that they use the charges. And having played that leader ability, it's really tempting. Every single time someone plays something that does anything, you're just like, yeah, I'm going to use that leader right now. So open board, Lydia tells me that they don't have a lot of proactivity in hand. Because you probably want to use that once you have some engines on the board, especially if it's like an assimilate type thing. Usually Lydia is assimilate, so you got to be mindful of that as well, right? The create and play stuff. Now, this leader is maybe a little bit uncharacteristic of assimilate, but I, I've seen it. Usually you'd see double cross, but... Okay. Yeah, it's like our biggest fear came true. We get a damage off that two armor before they can, but if I can kill it, it's even better. At least we can shut off that one. We get our own. If I can get a revenant out there and we have enough time, we could take out the Duchess so they can't make another copy. No one can. Uh, now I gotta deal with Cantarella, but <laughs> they pulled a one. Sick. Seven provision, one point play. I don't want them to mill out something very important. Let's put an end to this here. We'll make it rev food next turn. And, uh... Finally, we get ourselves in a position where we're winning on even, and... They've actually spent gold cards. Squirrel. Uh. I never play echo cards. Rarely. Except for the occasional Oneromancy and in Arendite, of course. But it's like whenever I do, they have a squirrel. Whenever I don't, they don't, you know? Easy win on even. You have to. In these types of matchups, you have to. The round three for Nilfgaard can always just take out a lot of things, you know? So we clearly want to bleed off of this. I don't want to go too tall. So Winch goes back. I like how we, we put Winch back, we get the Raffords. I'll give them two days before they cower. <laughs> I much rather take out Raffords with Henselt because the synergy it has there and the crew pocket it makes, but it's not the end of the world. The Empire will be victorious. Menno into boat into double Magni. <laughs> you can't make this up. 
Why would... I'm surprised of all things that that wasn't the leader. The discipline's real. Ah. Uh, you want to coup it first. Yeah, this can get bad. I guess I have to take it out. If I had damage on the board, we'd take Vincent there for sure, but... Gotcha, gotcha, it's gonna be hard to win this round. Terra Nova coming down for that. And... The fact is, too, that they can actually proc this, because they have mages in their deck, and they have soldiers in their deck. And when they crew pocket those with Rafferts, they're going to be getting the two damage every single time. And if they do create in plays, it's going to get even worse. Puppets. So I would imagine that they're trying to take my Carabalista, but then they have to worry about me taking their Magni. We kill it now. We can keep using the engine. I have to cool down with the. The amphibious, and then. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull off another Rafferts. So. You know what, though? I think it was the smarter play to just remove the Rafferts. Because they do, if they just even play cards beside it, it makes a difference. The realm of the living chain. Abandon now your mortal stain. It doesn't look like this game's one and two anyway, so we're gonna go into a round three. Stars what do you want? Upon for the night sky. Not bad. Because we get it back, because we have the crew, I think it's the only thing that's going to actually give me a fighting chance, you know? That we just give zeal to a revenant and take out the Raffords ASAP, and this might actually push them into playing something big, and then we have a big heat wave chilling. Oh, never mind. Time to dump or get off the privy. For the content? <laughs> For the content? Let's go! And they're proccing this stupid thing too. Okay, you know what? Uh, we get... Okay, we, we, have, we have all the charges we need. Let's just go for it. Two... 11, and then we take out the one. They probably play like Brathens. No shot. Oh man. 